Hey folks, looks like we're back. Right now I'm rolling up a slab and what I'm gonna do with this slab is I'll cut it into little triangles. And when I'm done cutting it into triangles, I'll attach them to the bowl. I'm trying to make a little tiny cat bowl for my kids so that way they can have some cereal. Make a handful for some friends as well because it's gonna be the holiday season. So they can, they can gift those to whomever they like. Um, so what I'm going for is uniformity and thickness. So this, let's take a look. This looks like a pretty reasonable thickness to the bowl that I had. Actually, it looks a little too thick. I'm gonna break, I'm gonna roll it downwards and make it a little bit thinner. using a piece of canvas. I call this duck canvas. It's about $10 a yard at the local fabric store. I think it's super convenient because it's very heavy duty. Just rinse it and let it hang outside and dry. And then, I don't know, this one's about five or six years old. So it's held up really well. But at any rate, so there we go. Now that my slab is rolled, have another quick look to see if there's a thickness that I like. That looks really reasonable. I like the thickness right there. It reminds me of the wall thickness of the bowls that I throw. So what I'll do next is to make a couple of additional slices. So here's a good size slice. And what I can do is cut this into a nice square. And that square could be cut diagonally. And then I've essentially got two little tiny triangles. And those triangles can be used as cat ears. And I'll attach those to the bowls. Um, so what I'll do now is I don't really like to handle these um, in this manner. I'll make some cuts right now. And then I'll let these sit for a while. And they'll get to a, a leather hard stage similar to the to the bowls that I threw and then I'll pick them up and try to handle them so here we go one last thing to mention these I think they they seem a little bit big which is actually okay I prefer to make these a little bit bigger at the onset and then after I could trim them down accordingly. So if they need to be a little bit smaller, that'll work. I think I made about a dozen of these, um, a dozen of the bowls. I got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So yeah, so I have 18 sets of ears. So I'm gonna pause the camera and we'll come back in just a moment. All right, so here's one of the bowls from the previous video. What we're gonna do is to take this and remove it from the bat and then trim it and finish altering it. So make sure my hands are relatively clean. I'm gonna give this a nice little twist. And then after it's twisted, I'll kind of slide this off. Um, part of the reason I don't pull it off is because I want the flat to remain relatively uh, even. I've done this in the past where it actually, if the wall thickness is too thin at the bottom, then it causes some warpage to happen. Okay. Alright, so the wall thickness um, and the base is really thin, so I'm just gonna trim off a little material and then we're gonna be done with this stage of the process. So I'm not gonna put a foot ring in this time. I usually do.
right, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna get a flat metal rib, and what I'll do is I'll smooth out the, uh, the surface, and then I'll be done. All right, so here we go again. Got this little bowl ready to go. Got a couple of these tiny little triangles as ears, and I've got a couple of tools. So just in case, I've got my rib tool, got a little kind of knife to be able to slip and score. I've got a paintbrush, and then I've got some underglaze. Give it a good shake, but um, this is, uh, what is this? This is an Amico underglaze decorating. It says lead free. It's an LUG1 black, and there's a food safe sticker right there. Um, two ounces. I think this is about six or seven dollars from a local, um, from a local pottery studio. Okay, so at any rate, what we're gonna do is uh, try to make some kind of a tiny face over there. So I'll start by taking my paintbrush, dipping it in some water, and I need to. Put a little bit of water right there. And make a couple of little tiny incisions. Then I'll go back and slip just a little bit more. Don't need to add too much water. In fact, I just threw these yesterday. It's not so, it's not that hot in Los Angeles right now. So. I don't need to worry about um, putting too much water. All right. One more dip. And then what I'll do is I'll go to one of these little triangles that I created. I just rolled the slab for these triangles, so they're going to be going to be a lot softer than this bowl that I have right now. So, got a little push. These are a lot bigger than the finished product, so what this is gonna allow me to do is to go back and carve these out. It should be done. Okay, so I'm just gonna press this into the hole. Later what I can do is integrate the clay together. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my paintbrush. <laughs> Silly. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is take my paintbrush, dry it off my apron, and then I'm gonna get some of this underglaze. I just shook it up a moment ago, so it should be ready. And Paint this onto the front. So I'll drag most of the material off of the side. I have a little bit inside my cup or inside my brush. Get this in camera. And paint a nice little dot. The beauty of this is, is you could always just go back and add a, an additional layer of this underglaze. Just a little bit more. By the way, this is greenware, so just through this, I'm gonna have to bisque fire it. But after I'm done bisque firing it, then I'm gonna take a different stain and put that around the eye to give it some kind of a spot. Maybe color one of the ears. So, so far so good, <laughs> cute. Another thing that's neat about this is that if you uh, 
If you put too much of the glaze on, what you could do is go back later and just kind of scrape off or just kind of wash off any of the excess, okay? So what I'll do is I'll let this dry and then I'll go clean up the ears and sculpt them a bit just so they match the overall shape of uh, the bowl.